Give me one uh, second here. Dave, down here. I'm using Dave's computer here, so I'm the less techy guy here, <laughs> or the lowest end of the tech spectrum. Uh, my name, like I said earlier, is Matt Duncan. I'm one of the co-founders of Brackets for Good. I'm just kind of curious of um, everyone in the room, how many of you before the emails for today's meetup had ever heard of Brackets for Good? Wow, I'm actually surprised at that. That's great. Um, well, I'm here to tell you a little bit. I'm kind of the hype man, so to speak. So, um, I, that's right. That's right. I'm, just, I'm missing the, the big clock. But um, this is a little bit, I'm just going to give you a little background about Brackets for Good and how we ended up here today. Um, so, Brackets for Good, just like this statement says, we are turning philanthropy into a team sport. Um, what we do is host a competitive online fundraising tournament for other nonprofits to out fundraise their opponents. So it's one point equals one dollar. If you can picture the men's and women's college basketball tournament, you have 64 organizations <coughs> competing to beat their, their competition in a week-long round. After they advance, the points reset and the whole competition starts over again. So it's an interesting way to bring new audiences to causes in our community um, that are out there trying to do good work. And a little bit about our background and how we started. Um, that is myself, Matt, another Matt, McIntyre, and Mr. Dave Cornelius over there. We're actually in the McIntyres, I'll call him Mac, in his basement. Um, and that was right around the time that we formed this organization. This picture speaks a lot to the whole beginnings of where we started. So we were having beer and pizza, so you guys are kindred spirits with us already. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how it could get any better, but we were watching the Butler basketball game. Mac is a alumni from Butler, and we were both just enamored with how much intensity and enthusiasm was around Butler. It wasn't, it was blue and white, but it wasn't about the Colts anymore, it was about Butler. But there was another underlying story there. Butler had been around Indianapolis for years and years and years, and really on a national scale, hadn't really tipped the meter where people knew who they were as a university. So what we started doing, we were doing some marketing consulting on the side at the time, and started having the conversation of how can we harness all this energy and enthusiasm that's around this game and channel it for something in a positive way to benefit our community. So we started coming up with this idea of a pick'em tournament, much like you'd see in any office pool where you fill out your bracket, you put some money in, and we were going to give the money back to a charity in our, in our community. So at first we were thinking, well, what about a, a youth basketball organization? We could really only think of one, which is where Mac grew up in Pike. And so we said, okay, well, what about other organizations in the city? What, what else do we know? We could name about five. So at that time, we were kind of coming into our own, having some disposable income. Our values started to line up with where we wanted to support organizations that were doing good things in our community. We didn't even know what existed. So we said, that's a problem. What can we do to generate some interest and enthusiasm about these causes in a different and engaging way? So we started off on this path of a competitive fundraising tournament. In 2012, we had our first tournament. We begged, I'm telling you, begged, Eight organizations were like, trust us, this is going to be fun, it's going to be great, I promise the technology is going to work, right Dave, right Dave? <laughs> but Dave came through, so we, we basically said, if we raised $5,000, we would consider that successful. We had a $5,000 cash prize as the title winner, and over a couple of weeks we raised over $32,000. So we thought, okay, maybe we got something here. So fast forward to year two, we expanded a little bit. Um, again, it's a grassroots effort, so the, the slow growth of people kind of finding out about what we were trying to do. Another $5,000 went to the winner, we raised over $85,000. Then in 2014, word got out. The nonprofits knew that we existed and they wanted to get in the competition. It wasn't so much about the dollars they could raise as much as it was about they could elevate their status by participating in our tournament. So we had 64 organizations participate. Over $336,000 was raised during that tournament. And we thought, okay, what else can we do? Which naturally came to expansion. So last year, or this year, but um, in March, 
we expanded to Louisville. We had no footprint in Louisville whatsoever. We had, it took us three years in Indianapolis to get over 120 organizations to register with us. We got 85 to register with us in under two months when we expanded to Louisville. So there's a very <coughs> big interest in what we're doing from the nonprofit community. They see a ton of value in competing, which sometimes that can seem kind of weird because you know nonprofits, they're out there trying to win and help the community. But what we found is that the competition breeds this teamwork. So board members, staff, volunteers, people that care about these causes start to get around this tournament and really get behind their cause to help them win. So where are we at this year? Um, we put our first full-time employee, which is Mac, behind Brackets for Good. So again, there's only one of us working at it full-time. And here's where we are. So Indianapolis, Louisville, St. Louis, Ann Arbor, and the Twin Cities. And we're gonna pull this all off come March. And we're thrilled to do it. It is the most fun and excitement, and none of this would be possible without Adam and Dave over there in the corner, which they're gonna get up and give a little bit more uh, show that's the software and the technology. But um, we can go out and sell this all day long. It's pretty easy to do. But the, the wizardry really happens with the software. And I hope that you guys get a taste for what that looks like because what we like to do is learn about the strategies that organizations use to win and figure out how to automate it. Because what we have in our tournament is small organizations and big guys. We've got Gleaner's Food Bank going up against Pause and Think, an organization who has under a $100,000 budget versus someone who has a $42 million organization. I mean, if you can think about the resources that one has versus the other, it's night and day. But these organizations that are in the small divisions, they still want to compete and be a part of it because of that attention that the bigger organizations bring to the table. So there's a ton of benefits for participating. Some of the statistics from last year's tournament, this is the Indy and Louisville breakdown. There's a couple of stats that are pretty interesting. And one of the stats that's remained true since the very beginning of Brackets for Good is this first time donor stat. So we keep track of how many donations are coming through the first time, and it's 61%. That's pretty substantial. I don't know if you've ever heard of those 24 hour giving days, but it's kind of a consolidation of giving versus what we're doing, which is bringing new audiences to the table. We reduce the barrier of entry so you can make a donation for even as low as $1. And that $1, we've had matchups in where only $1 was the deciding point difference for someone advancing versus getting eliminated. Mobile donations are certainly on the rise. Our time on site um, is around 340, three minutes and 40 seconds during the tournament. So tons of eyeballs on it, um, tons of exciting things happening. And what we're doing on uh, November 1st, if you guys do want to learn more, we're having our team here uh, at the Speakeasy where we're uh, bringing in a bunch of people that are like myself, a volunteer, and we're, we're spending our time helping over 320 organizations in 2016 to raise some money, raise some awareness, and do some good work in the community. So with that, that's the hype behind Brackets for Good. I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. And I'm not sure, if Adam, if you're up or Dave, or both, okay. technical, we're not going to get into any code, um, but later on Dave is going to be talking about, he's going to he's going to walk us through how to build an interface with React, and that's going to be the more technical side. Um, so we definitely want to mention where we've come from, because a lot of the reason we're talking about Brackets for Good here, um, because you guys are all, either you have experience in Rails, or you're learning it, or something else in Ruby, and what we'd like to communicate here is that something like Brackets for Good, where it's a charitable give back of code and a great way 
to connect with other developers, learn in your spare time with experienced developers, and, like, and actually make an impact in the community as well. So, um, but some of the background on us is we both worked at Moby. Um, so, yeah, I think I heard Moby a couple times, and many of you have probably been through there, maybe. <laughs> um, but Brackets for Good kind of wants to be the Moby of the nonprofit space, where we suck up all the Ruby developers, like anyone who <laughs> has to work on Ruby. So, um, but then also highlighting other team experience we had. Um, worked at Apartment Therapy on a team that was, was exclusively Ruby, um, dealing with a big volume of visitors. And then um, Adam and I work on Challenge as well. So that's my full time thing now. Um, so we have kind of a wide range of experience. And each year, we're applying our experience in very different ways and brackets for good. So if you guys are interested in applying anything you're picking up, or, or maybe just leaning on some of the experience we have, there's tons of stuff we can do together, and, and we have a good time as we get into more of that later. So just to give a little background on our tech stack, um, let's strike first, just because and it's not really part of a tech stack typically, but a big part about what we do is we process donations. Um, we process payments. So we are integrated with Stripe. Um, and that is a huge part of what we do, and it's very critical that the donation process goes through smoothly. So that that's a great one for if you're interested in building anything that takes money. Um, we know about it. We've accepted over a million dollars in payments through the site, uh, running on a single VPS with Rails app. So it's it's exactly what you guys are working on, and spare time, scrap together stuff, like get it done. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, foundation on the front end. Rails, of course, as I've probably said several times. And then the last one on, on the right there is React, which we'll talk more about later. That's something that's kind of just starting to blend into brackets for good. Mm -hmm. So as Matt was saying, this uh, breakfast group was kind of started with um, pizza and beer, and actually Ruby Meetup is a lot like how breakfast for good works. Um, I've always I've always joked that you know I, I love to hang out and drink, and if I can do that and make money for charity, then I have a duty to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not only do I have a duty, the city needs me to do this. So. <laughs> um, it's really cool that Breakfast for Good kind of works with a lot of sponsors. Um, there's some opportunities that come up that can be that can be really fun. Um, Liftoff is the is the beer sponsor, and so there's always a ton of Liftoff, <laughs> and I think that might be my favorite part. We um, <laughs> we even so so a couple weeks ago, I guess maybe a month ago, um, Daredevil had a hops and flip-flops event, uh, a beer uh, brew fest. And through Brackets for Good, you know, in the off season, we're not doing anything um, directly related with Brackets for Good, but a group of us went out and we took pictures and we worked with um, Daredevil and we're still helping the community and we get to drink at the same time. <laughs> um, we accept people who don't drink as well. So for me in particular, the thing that I look at um, as Bracket for Good as, a, as an opportunity is everybody in here is really technical. We all know um, we're, we're, we're learning Ruby. And I think the goal is to build a product. And there's a whole side to that that I didn't understand for a long time. And through Brackets for Good, I'm starting to understand the marketing side of, you know, you can build the most complicated thing, the most sophisticated piece of technology that ever existed. If nobody understands what it does or how to use it, it doesn't matter. So there's a whole side of this that technical people typically don't understand. And that's where Breakfast for Good um, really shines as an opportunity. So for example, when you donate on the site, um, we basically give you an image. It says, you know, I scored today. That means you donated. You did a good thing to, to you know the cynical technical person. We gave you an image, big deal, right? Like that's 
that, that was my mindset too. Um, however, it turns out that you know this sticker can solve a lot of problems. Um, the average person, this is you know they're ragging to their friend, they're excited about their donation. That that whole missing piece of uh, of, of kind of personality that is part of this. Um, I always think to um, one of my coworkers at Moby. You know we were building some really complicated thing, and. She said, you know, like, this is really cool, but all I wanted to do was look at pictures of, cat, pictures of cats, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about that cool thing that you made? Um, cool. Presentation's <laughs> over. It's dinner time. <laughs> How old is that baby now? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start off, actually, with StarCraft 2. Yes. <laughs> this is so in StarCraft 2 there is you know you have like um, really I just want you all to watch StarCraft but <laughs> uh, you have a thing called micro right where when you're in a battle an important battle your units will fight automatically but you can choose if you're good enough um, as these players are you can choose to control your units and if you control them then you can win battles that you otherwise would lose and so hopefully there's sound actually there is no sound there we go. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. They says the banelings are out on the uh -oh. creep. Oh, oh my god. Man. Oh. Burrow is done and there they go. Totally sick tasteless. Beautiful. He's attempting to push forward here hoping that in fact he can just overrun the ramp since the uh, hydras do deal so much damage. Yeah. He has two oh investors as god. well. Oh my god. This is going to be wild if he can get the hydras that's all he needs to do. Just blow oh those up. Oh my god! There are so many Baneling landmines right now, Tasteless. Oh! Oh! Absolutely sick! And the Mutas will clean up everything else. I got the sickest nerd chills oh right now, god, Tasteless. I got absolutely beautiful. Seeds on the natural. <laughs> so this is April 3rd, 2015, 7.57 p.m., and we're looking at the final match of the 2015 tournament. If this is the first time you're ever looking at Brackets for Good, you basically, here's the bracket, the rounds, it's all come down to this, it's 1v1, Humane Society, and Joseph Maley Foundation. Um, and so it's, so as I was saying, it's 1v1. Um, as you can see, like these are the live donations that are coming in. So at this time, the whole Rex for Good crew is basically at Moby. We have all of our TVs up. We're looking at social media. Um, we're eating, at, eating the pizza, drinking the beer, and watching this. This is, this is something that you know I never would have thought is actually a cool thing to, to see. But when you actually see it in person, and see these just ridiculous donations coming through. I think I think that's really what it's all about. Uh, so these are the final moments. And at this point, most people are having a ton of fun drinking. <laughs> Adam and I are like staring at this, like looking at the server load and everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so we've still got a minute and a half left. Um, it used to be actually before this tournament, Dave would actually during the week he would write a script every week that would manually like look through all this stuff. It would close the rounds, open the new rounds, and he would have to be somewhere at 8, 8, or, uh, 8 p.m. with Wi-Fi, and he would he would load a production console and paste it in, and then right at 8 p.m. he would click the button. Execute the script, and that's how Brackets for Good worked for three years. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that is not something we want to talk about. That's not how it's going to work. That's how it's going to work. That's how it's going to work. We could maybe handle like 80% of things that would happen, but I, you know, I couldn't just like go on vacation and assume <laughs> that it was going to go smoothly. But it's just called being lean. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs>
but yeah, we didn't we didn't build that until we needed it, and then we did need it, and now it's totally automated. We handle ties, which you know it's 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 the one dollar it's the one dollar problem. Like we could just you know <laughs> are these full dollar amounts? These yeah. are dollar amounts. Holy crap. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> So yeah, the 10 grand was so you can see them competing huge right here. <laughs> I should have actually, I should have been commentating this. Let's go back. <laughs> so, I don't know if this was mentioned, but if I remember correctly, you can essentially set it to to donate, to, to actually make the donation at, at a certain time or at like... I'll, uh, I'm going to show that right after. Okay, yeah. So yeah, check this out. 27,000, 27,000. They're neck and neck. They're both 28k. They both got, you know, $1,000. And this is the final minute. There are chills. <laughs> so, there are chills. <laughs> so Joseph Melee just got $3,100. They're in the lead. They're they're feeling really good. They think they got this. And then Humane just comes through. This is the last 20 seconds of the whole thing for $10,000. <laughs> There's the 10k donation. So 10 seconds left. And so you, you think you've got it. And this, and this is the whole reason that I, that I played that StarCraft video is um, as, a, as a competitive player playing StarCraft at that high, high level, the software, you know, you, you do something in StarCraft and the software always responds the exact same way. It's predictable, you know exactly how it's gonna work, and you and it has to work like that because you're competing. And if it doesn't, you're gonna be frustrated. One of the things that we have to deal with at Brax for Good that you might not think about is that this is a game. People are strategizing, um, and a lot of the times, the strategy is at the very last seconds of the whole thing, you need that big donation to come through because that's how, you, that's how you're gonna win. And so a lot of, not a lot, but a big part of what we do is is all about that interaction. Um, you know, we've had people in the past that will be like, you know, they'll say, I had the, the winning donation queued up and I pushed the button with 10 seconds left and it told me I had to make an account or something. And then we're constantly iterating on this to make this as good as possible. Um, okay, so the last thing that I'll show is what Miles was talking about, which is, this is the buzzer feeder. During the normal tournament, you have an option when you make a donation, you click a button, it's going to double your donation, and with 15 minutes left on the clock, all of these are published. So, so as a nonprofit, you might think you're you're ahead, and then 15 minutes to go, all of these all of these secret donations come through at the last minute, and, and you can you can really see what's going on. Uh, this is not something that I could show with the the replay feature, just because uh, it would it would basically like crash my computer. So <laughs> we just go with the YouTube. Nice. So on the left is Indiana, yeah. on the right. Is Indiana. <laughs> and these are all people doubling their donation. Mm -hmm. Wow. So was this the, was the actual funds transferred beforehand, and you're just showing them to the screen now, or are you actually yes. processing them live? Yeah, the funds were taken ahead of time. I mean, part of the reason we, we did this feature, at least from the technical standpoint, is take the money up front so when we're really pressed with the load and everything, we, yeah. um, we're not relying on all those donations going through. So yeah, we're really just like time stamping them ahead of time and then pushing them out. Do you mention where you deploy? Like what service you use for actually hosting your the Rails app? We use Linode right now. Cool. So that's actually um, that's all we got. Uh, if there's any questions, we would love to answer those. If anybody's interested in seeing more about BFG, we're gonna hang out. We're gonna we'll, sh we'll show you the back end. We'll show you yeah, whatever. Yeah, and I guess so. I have a um, React presentation as well. Figured maybe we should take a break. For a few. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Like a, uh, Five, five minutes, if that's enough time for everybody. Five minutes until we get a clock. Sure. Um, <coughs> we can come back and, and hear about React and, and how it fits in with BFG. Sound good? Well, Anybody have any questions before we do the breakdown, actually? How Sorry. much of Challenge yeah. is in this? Because <coughs> um, that's yeah. kind of similar. It's still yeah. brackets and oh, yeah. things, right? 
Um, a lot of it is just kind of the like understanding the domain. So like yeah. you you work for anything, you got to figure out what the heck the business is doing before you start building. So that was a lot of this. Like we're used to brackets. We know um, we know that you need to start with like a, a power of two number, otherwise you're gonna have issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're I mean we run thousands and thousands of brackets and uh, so brackets wasn't something we were gonna trip up on, but Everything is kind of is contained in BFJ and separate from challenge, but it, it's really all about the, uh, the domain knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I cut into what you're talking about. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah. Did you start with Stripe? Have you always used Stripe since? No, that's a good question because um, we started with PayPal, and <laughs> some of you may have heard PayPal horror stories, and we're we're one of them. It could have been a lot worse. Um, but we had, how much was tied up in the bank? Like over uh, uh, the like entire thousands, amount, right? The entire amount that we raised in the first year was tied up on the account. Yeah. And it took some time to get it freed up from. It took us to reach out to the head of compliance with PayPal. Through, nice. through LinkedIn, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they freeze, like froze the account. And, Thought we were money laundering or something. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so Stripe has been good to us though, um, ever since, and we've no reason to switch yet. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Let's do 805. 805. Yeah. Okay.